What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. This is my second channel and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this and you wanna see more of that and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's talk about the news that is taking the metal world by storm, MGK versus Slipknot. I will just steal this content as I always do for my friends at Metal Injection. Again, I suggest Metal Injection and Metal Sucks. These guys are my friends, I think they do a great job. I always like to steal their content here on the stream. So here is what happened. I'm going to just sort of catch everybody up on this, and then I will give you my two cents on it. The headline here is Machine Gun Kelly slams Slipknot from the stage at Riot Fest. So this was a couple days ago. Here is the video that everyone's talking about. I'll just play it here. Hey, you want to know what I'm really happy that I'm not doing? Being 50 years old, 50 years old, wearing a fucking weird mask on a fucking stage. Fucking shit fucking shit <laughs> so anyway what's everyone's favorite candy so apparently what happened is that slipknot started playing like you know they've got multiple stages right so apparently what happened is that slipknot was starting to play on another stage in the middle of his set and like a lot of people were leaving the mgk set to go watch slipknot he apparently got butt hurt about that and and said this for anybody that didn't understand it what he said was hey you all know what i'm really happy that i'm not doing being 50 years old wearing a fucking mask on a fucking stage <laughs> fucking shit the first thing, you know, is that he's from Cleveland because anybody that says fuck three times in two sentences, that's some strong Cleveland energy there. For anybody who doesn't know, I lived there for three years from 96 to 99. And MGK just reminds me of one of those guys that I would see like smoking outside the rapid station on West 117th and, you know, just kind of give you, give you kind of the stink eye for no reason, ask you for a cigarette and then kind of like mildly antagonize you for no reason and then just get bored and leave you alone a lot of cleveland energy coming out of this guy now you might be wondering what's his problem i mean aside from the fact that apparently he was a little bit butthurt about the fact that people were leaving his set to go watch Slipknot. There's actually a little bit more to the story than that. A couple months ago, here in February 2021, Corey Taylor kind of talked a little bit of shit on him. Here's what he said. I look at some of these bands that sound like this or sound like that or sound like the other guy, and it's just like, well, they obviously listen to two albums that have been out for a while, but the ones that really frustrate me are the ones that they take something that's been around forever and then just basically rework it and call it new, even though it's completely derivative. You know the band they're ripping off. They're not even trying to rip off a bunch of bands. They're ripping off one band. But the younger generation picks them up and says, this is our blah, 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 because they're tired of old people telling them that the music came out before them was better. And I don't know who's right, but I know both are wrong because we should be encouraging everything. Taylor went on to acknowledge that he's a big old grumpy grandpa and added, I hate all the new rock for the most part. This is the part where you know that he's talking about MGK. So this part, you know, he could have been talking about anyone. This is where you sort of know that he was talking about MGK. I hate all new rock for the most part. I hate the artists who failed in one genre and decided to go rock. I think he knows who he is. Most likely referring to MGK, who started his career doing pop rap and has recently released a pop punk album. So that's how you know that he was talking about MGK. I thought that was kind of lame and boom rush on Corey Taylor's part. There is a little bit more to the story than just that, which I'll talk about in a minute here. But even though I think MGK is kind of a loud mouth douche um I, I thought it was kind of lame that Corey said that but you know that's Corey taylor he sort of knows that that's his job is to be the the get off my lawn guy um and he sort of acknowledges that here in any case i think that's probably part of the reason why mgk was a little bit salty and why he said this and then the plot gets thicker this video started making the rounds and everyone, you know, is kind of going off. I would say that pretty much everybody other than MGK stands, of which there are, are definitely plenty. And, you know, obviously all of them took his side. But I think pretty much everybody else was like, what the fuck? Like, all right, so Slipknot are a bunch of older guys that wear masks on stage and like what's the big deal that's their job right you know i don't like novelty metal i don't like gimmicks like i think the clown and jumpsuit thing is it's not my thing it's kind of lame in my opinion but it's not like they're a local band it's not like they just started yesterday these guys make millions of dollars a year i don't know if you want me to put on a fucking clown mask for millions of dollars a year i'll do it too so i i don't know i just i don't really think that that uh i don't really think that sticks especially considering that mgk made a bunch of waves i guess it was last year mgk as i've talked about before 
has been pushing for artists to act more like rock stars and think about aesthetics more, right? He he had that thing on Allison from Spotify's podcast where he was complaining about warp Tour bands wearing comfortable shoes on stage and not acting like rock stars. And I think he was right about that. I think he's right that a lot of those bands don't want to look or act like entertainers in any way. And that that's a big part of the reason why rock, especially at that time, was kind of falling by the wayside because, you know, people want to be entertained. They want a spectacle, right or wrong. That's what people want. And I think that a lot of people took his comments about wearing comfortable shoes, literally. He's not literally saying if you wear Vans on stage, that's the new suck. What he's saying is you got to give people a show. You got to put on a spectacle. Like you got to act like an entertainer is what he was trying to say. And I agree with him on that. So I think it's really kind of hypocritical and kind of a bad look that now he's criticizing a band that became successful in large part because of that, right? So it just kind of tells me that, you know, his beef is not with the masks per se. His beef is just like, <laughs> he's just salty. If we dig into the receipts a little bit, uh, it turns out that there's a little bit more to it than just that. Turns out that maybe MGK he is a little bit salty because of some, some personal history with Corey and MGK. Here is what he said, kind of in an attempt to, I don't know, clap back, I guess. I think he sort of got the sense that he was taking an L in the media, and so he tweeted this. Corey did a verse for a song on Tickets to My Downfall album. It was fucking terrible, so I didn't use it. He got mad about it and talked shit to a magazine about the same album he was on. Y'all stories are all off. Just admit he's bitter. And then Corey Taylor responded with this. I don't like people airing private shit like a child, so this is all I'll say. I didn't do the track because I don't like when people try to quote unquote write for me. I said no to them. So without further ado, receipts, this is all I'm going to say about it. So these are screenshots of some emails between him and uh, Travis Barker who produced that song. So what happened here is that Corey sent his verse to Travis. Travis ran it by MGK. And here is what Travis says. Yo, Corey, we love it. Peep these notes from Kells. It's super fucking close. Yo, Trav, got super inspired again after listening to Corey's vocals on Can't Look Back and added some guitars over his part. So it kicks you in the face right when his voice comes in. He also types with the letter U like he's a teenager texting in 2004 or a boomer mom texting in 2021. Like who types like this anymore? But anyway, number one, can you tell him he fucking killed it and I'm stoked and honored that he's even on it WTF. Two, I've been watching the news lately about the war and the state of everything and it made me look at the song in a different way like soldiers need a song to stay alive to, a song to fight to, keep them going. <laughs> I don't know what song this is, uh, but I don't know. Any Anytime people sort of, especially someone like MGK, who as far as I know has no connection to the military or anything remotely like that, sort of takes it upon himself to, you know, say that he's going to he's gonna help the troops get through their shit. It kind of makes me cringe a little bit. Here's the part that I think was the source of the conflict here. I added a bridge that makes the last chorus pretty powerful. I think you and him will dig it. Three, I sent Corey an idea for the second half of his verse. He can obviously say fuck it, but it would be sick to see if it inspired anything or if he would try it like that. Four, I laid a demo screamish type track under his first part of the verse that would be dope to hear in his psychosocial voice. Fuck yeah, tell him he rocks. So basically what MGK was saying here, and, and I think he did say it in a professional way. He was basically saying like, eh, I, I, I don't think it's quite there. Could you try doing it like this? He was giving Corey Taylor some suggestions and kind of rewrote his part to some extent, which I think is a totally fair thing to do. And Corey basically was not into it. So he replied, hey man, I missed your call last night, by the way, I'm on dad hours, haha. -ha. So I listened to the ideas and to be honest, I don't think I'm the right guy for the track. Nothing personal. I just think that if this is what MGK is looking for, someone else is the guy to do it. It's all good. I'm stoked for him. I hope you guys find the right fit for it. Hope you understand and I wish you guys the best with it. If I can help in any way, let me know all the best, Corey Taylor. So basically Corey's like, eh, you know what? Nah, take it or leave it. And I get it because somebody at Corey's level, he doesn't need to do features. I think he has earned the right to basically tell people, fuck off. I don't want any notes. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And if, and if you don't want, if you don't like what I gave you, then I'm out. I think he's earned that. I do that now because obviously I'm not a fraction of anywhere near as successful as Corey or anything like that. But anybody who is in the position of being asked to do more things than they can say yes to and sort of has the leverage of like, I don't really need to do this. That's when you've earned the ability to say stuff like this, to just walk away from something if you're not feeling it. And that's what Corey did. And it seems like uh, MGK was a little, a little probably butthurt about that. I don't think 
Corey did anything at all wrong here. I think this is a case of creative differences. Like he wanted to go one way with the song. MGK wanted to go another way with it. I don't think either one of them are wrong. They just wanted to do different things. I get the sense that MGK was a little bit salty about that. So we'll see if anything more comes of it. But this seems to be kind of the essence of the drama to me. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, MGK, I don't know, kind of seems like he's a little bit of a jilted lover here, right? Seems like he's a girl who got dumped and then is getting butt hurt. You know, as my friend Ryan Katz said on Twitter, MGK is the kind of guy that would DM a girl with compliments. And when the girl shoots him down, he says, you're gross anyways, which pretty much is what I feel like is happening here. You know, MGK wanted to work with Corey, of course, for obvious obvious reasons. I mean, Corey's a legend who wouldn't want to work with him. And then when it didn't work out and Corey, you know, kind of took a little bit of a shot at him, which again, I think is kind of lame, but whatever. Then he got salty and lost his shit on stage and talked a bunch of shit. So that's sort of what happened. I have a few thoughts on this. Um, number one, for the people who said that MGK failed at rap so he had to shift to pop punk that's not true mgk has never failed like i think his rap is fucking horrible by the way his pop punk stuff is okay i think his rap is absolute garbage like just absolutely awful but he was a super successful rapper i mean look at this these are his albums going back to 2012 his first album lace up number four on billboard number one on on r&b and hip-hop next album general mission in 2015 number four number one bloom in 2017 number eight number three hotel diablo in 2019 number five number four and then tickets to my downfall number one so that was his first number one but he he was a billboard top 10 rapper like for a decade almost so it's not accurate to say that he failed at rap so he had to make the jump to pop punk again i'm not a fan of his music but that's just not true so i think everyone should just stop saying that because it just makes you sound dumb my main thought on this is that mgk took a big l here because First of all, it's just kind of lame to see someone's ego get the best of them like that. He's a parent. He's 31 years old. He's been in the music business for a decade. He should be able to control his emotions better than this, in my opinion. I think it's lame that he let his kind of anger and ego get the best of him like that, especially after being in the game so long. You know, it's one thing to have an outburst like that when you're 19. But to have an outburst like that when you're 31 years old, not cool. And by the way, when I was 31, I said a lot of dumb shit too. So I'm not saying I'm necessarily any better. I'm more speaking from experience there. You got to be better than this at that age. I understand, you know, that's sort of MGK's appeal is that he's that loudmouth guy that will say whatever he wants. And so, you know, to some extent, he has a lot of positive reinforcement as to why he should keep doing this stuff. But to me personally... I don't think it's cool. I think it's lame and disappointing. The other thing is that I think that this is kind of a misstep for MGK. On the one hand, you know, he plays the role of a heel and that's worked for him. But I think in this case, he's gone a little bit too far. You know, it's one thing to be a heel and sort of play the foil to a certain segment of the scene, you know, like Franz from Attila does. But that only works if you're gaining more fans than you lose. And if you're like building a platform for yourself, what I think he did here is just really piss a lot of people off and alienate people. I don't think he, he is getting any new fans from this. When he went to number one on Billboard with Tickets to My Downfall, that pissed a lot of people off because they felt like he didn't belong in pop punk and blah, blah, blah. But that's okay because, you know, he was winning. He got a lot of new fans from that and like he didn't necessarily do anything wrong. I mean, nobody should hate him for being successful, right? But in this case, he just talked a bunch of shit on somebody that people really respect. He's not winning any new fans from this. All he's doing is making people just think he's kind of a loudmouth douche that doesn't have respect for people that he probably should respect. I think that that was a mistake on his part. And I'm going to be interested to see, you know, he's playing a bunch of these red state rock fests coming up soon. For example, this one here, Rebel Rock Fest. Like it just, I love these graphics, like everything about this. I'm just obsessed with this. This should be called Leather Wrist Cuff Festival. I mean, just the name of Rebel Rock Fest. Rebel Rock Fest in Orlando, Florida, September 24th to 26th, 2021. Be there at the Central Florida Fairgrounds. Trying to trying to work on my strip club DJ voice. But he's playing this with Volbeat, Skillet, Pop Evil, From Ashes to New, Papa Roach, Five Finger Death Punch, Seven Dust, All That Remains. You know, a lot of these pretty straightforward Red State Rock Fest kind of bands. 
And I think he's going to get fucking wrecked. He just talked a bunch of shit on one of their favorite bands for no reason, really. I think he is going to get wrecked. You might say, well, he doesn't need the rock audience. And that's kind of true, maybe to some extent. But it seems like he wants the rock audience, right? Like if, if he didn't care about the rock audience, then he wouldn't be playing these festivals. So he needs them. He wants them. And he's only going to get booked at these festivals if people like him and he continues to draw crowds and stuff, especially because I'm sure he gets paid a shitload. So I think it's actually a mistake for him in this case you know there's a line where you can go from being the heel like ronnie radke where it's like there's a lot of people that hate him but there's also a lot of people who love him and so it kind of works out you can cross the line from being the heel that everyone loves to hate to just being that person where everyone's like Man, fuck that guy. I also wonder if this is going to hurt any of his industry relationships that matter, you know? Now Travis Barker, who seems to be the sort of person who put this together, I would imagine Travis isn't thrilled about this. And to some extent, you know, drama and shit happens in music, especially when we're dealing with these, like, egomaniac rock stars. I, I get that. But... If I was Travis Barker, I'd be like, oh, fuck, really? Come on, man. Like, I have co-signed on everything you've done, and now you're going to do this? Like, you know how this stuff happens. Your loudmouth friend says some dumb shit that has nothing to do with you, but your, your friends, people are hitting you up about it. You're like, hey, what's up with that shit your friend said? And you're like, listen, man, I don't know, like, doesn't concern me. But like, you are kind of held accountable to the stuff your friends say, right or wrong. That's just how it works. You got to imagine that Travis is getting a lot of texts from people like, what's up with your boy MGK? Like, you need to, you need to fucking tell your man to shut his mouth. This isn't cool. And again, you know, he's a huge star. I don't think he's going to ruin his industry relationships overnight or anything like that. But it's not going to help. That's for sure. And at a certain point, this stuff does catch up with you. You know, you can be on top of the world, but you piss enough people off and eventually it is going to catch up with you you know you can only alienate people for so long before it catches up with you and i, and I kind of have to wonder if that's going to happen with mgk the last thought i have on this is for anybody who's saying like oh i thought you didn't want to make videos about this kind of stuff i thought you didn't like drama you're right <laughs> i don't want to make a video about this i don't give a shit about any of this stuff but this is what people want to click on People want to click on MGK versus Slipknot. People are excited. Like, this is what gets clicks. This is why everyone is talking about it in the media. I made a whole video about this, actually, about, you know, what I call the Corey Taylor effect. Although, in this case, I would almost call it, like, the MGK effect. I don't necessarily want to talk about this stuff, but this is what gets clicks. I don't know. I guess I don't have to, but I would be leaving money on the table not to do it. My job is to get views. So for me to not talk about drama would just be stupid. Here's what I think is sad. For all the people who tell me, you know, why don't you talk about newer artists and stuff like that? The reason why is because people care more about this shit than they do talking about new artists. We're going to listen to new music tonight here on Twitch. I think it's sad that this is what people care about. So... To me, this whole thing is dumb. Like, Corey Taylor should not have had a boomer moment and said that on the podcast. MGK should not let his ego get the best of him on Riot Fest when people go watch Slipknot. He definitely shouldn't talk shit about Corey Taylor on Twitter and say he did a bad verse. Like, it's all just sad. <laughs> it's all sad, but here we are. I'm going to keep talking about MGK as long as I can get views talking about him because that's what you all have decided that you want. So here we are. Let's look in the chat. Grown men arguing online. Yeah, it's sad. And like I said, I don't necessarily want to make videos about this, but it gets views and, you know, daddy just bought a new house. <laughs> if talking about MGK and Corey Taylor helps me pay the mortgage, then, you know, got to do what I got to do. I think MGK needs to realize that this isn't rap culture. Metal and rock isn't based around dissing and rap battles. The rock culture doesn't play like that. That is true, too. That's not really an element of rock culture. They're not into that. I don't give a shit about any of these kind of beefs. It's so uninteresting to me that like Corey Taylor and MGK aren't friends. It's such a like, who gives a shit? Here's what I'm talking about. Otto Hegio says we should make them kiss. Exactly. That's what we should do. I would like to see them kiss. Do you guys remember shipping? Any of you guys on Tumblr when all the, the kids were into shipping? I ship MGK and Corey. Oh, relation. Oh, shipping is relationship. Oh, I never thought about the origin of that. Now you know.